Hey, hope all is well. I'm doing pretty good. I just wanted to talk to you about my coffee gear. I'm sure you got coffee gear too. And it's one of those things to where you can have, you can really have them all, but do you really notice the big difference in taste in the coffee? Or do certain products do better with different gadgets? That's the situation that we're in. My all time favorite is the Haruby 60 and also the Haruby 60 Switch. The Switch is a little bit better just because you have that option. There's other brewers that I do have that I tend to not really use as much. And one of them being this one right over here. This one right here, this is the fellow dripper. Cool thing about the fellow dripper is that, I don't know if it's cool, it is what it is. I'll tell you the reason why I don't like it. It uses these cone filters. These are not the actual fellow dripper filters. This is the Cleta Wave. These are a lot cheaper, easier to get to. The only real big difference between what I've noticed with these filters versus the uh, the fellow filters is that they're taller. So when you put the other ones in, they go really deep. More than a little bit more than halfway, but it doesn't come up all the way to the top, which I don't think it matters that much because you can do, I would do no more than about 30, 30 grams of coffee, and that should be well good enough for the cleat away filters. But be mindful of that. If you're only doing like 10 to 15 grams, you should be perfectly fine using the Kalita Wave filters. I just brewed a cup. This is a uh, 1 to 15 ratio, the Colombian that I don't care for, or the Colombian coffee. Okay, here's the thing. Coffees do what they want to do, right? And I think the biggest thing that we're really trying to get to or understand about coffee makers is that do they really make that big of a difference? Again, I like the how you be 60 because one it does have its drawbacks too like all drippers do but i do like how ease of use it is and it doesn't have any of these ridges right here and that's my really biggest gripe about these flat bottom brewers is that you have to deal with the ridges and the reason why i don't like that is because the coffee tends to stay stuck on them so you're not 100% you're never really 100% but you were not extracting as much as you should from the coffees. A lot of times people just pour in the middle and just call it a day, which is fine. There's gonna be casualties. Nothing is ever gonna be perfect when you brew coffee, but you wanna try to maximize your extractions with the least amount of effort. And I think that's really the theme that I'm really trying to get at. So let's go ahead and taste this coffee real quick and then we'll go do an overview of the brewer and then we'll call it a day. 200 degrees, less, acid, less acidic than normal. It's actually been uh, ground couple days before now it's starting to come through the grapefruity taste that I don't really care for I'm not tasting any sweetness on it but it seemed like it did carve curve or polish off the acidity that I don't care so much about this coffee just a little bit but is that enough though that's the thing about these brewers you got to know what you like about coffee and it's okay to go ahead and try different coffee makers with the same coffee to see if you're going to taste a difference but my biggest thing is that if it's only slightly better even with the hard v60 you may feel that you prefer the flat bottom which that's your prerogative that's you that's your mouth that's your palate you do what you want to yeah it did kind of curb it off i mean polish it off just a little bit the acidity but it's still there so here's the brewer okay it has a nice little metal metal finish and then this is a rubber gasket and usually what you do is that you put the uh, the coffee maker on top right here. This is the, also the the canter right there. You see nice fellow uh, logo. You put it on top and you put the filter up top. Not the whole thing. That would be kind of outrageous. But you can if you want to be wasteful. <laughs> and then you brew your coffee. You put your gooseneck or you can also do another coffee brewer when you do this. And you can use this wait you know 30 40 seconds bloom or not bloom that's up to you i highly suggest blooming but whatever that's a story for another day or check out this video over there or it's, it's good to bloom it really is i thought it was bullshit but it's really a good idea 30 40 30 40 seconds or whatever recipe that you do have that's the beauty of all this it's it's up to you your recipe is what you think it you want it to be and if you make great tasting coffee because you're the one drinking it just do that then once you're done which is kind of cool put it on top of here let it finish dripping 
and doing this thing and then you can go ahead and enjoy your cup of coffee. But again, I just wanna give you like a quick overview of the fellow dripper, another flat bottom dripper, and there's some other ones out there. We'll talk about those later. But the biggest thing, the biggest takeaway is that you have to find the gear that works for you for most of the coffees. Yes, you can play around with grind sizes. You can play around with, uh, with temperature, different coffees, different roast degrees and all that stuff, different coffees that you like. But at the end of the day, you're gonna have to find the maker that works for you most of the time or you can just use whichever one that you want for that time being so that's what i got for you talk to you later bye